folks. Steve Ice here. As you can tell, I'm, I'm not in South Carolina, I'm, I'm in New Orleans. A few weeks ago, Thad Apple, the attorney Esquire, with Thad Apple and Associates, was on the radio show with us, and we had a little glitch in the radio program. Uh, Thad is leading a, an effort here in Louisiana against this, what I think is an unconstitutional move to force people not to use cash for secondhand transactions. He's going to talk to you about this legislation in a few minutes. But uh, all around this country, we need to give him support in making sure this is stopped here in Louisiana and doesn't go to any other states. So at this time, I'd like to introduce Thad Apple. Thad, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks, Steve. And if you're ever in uh, Columbia, Casey, South Carolina, we have our called Casey Mafia Breakfast Group that meets every Friday at 7 o'clock. And you're always welcome. Thank you. Thank Thad, you. appreciate it. Well, uh, Thank you all for uh, taking your time to listen to me about this issue in uh, Louisiana. Uh, this last 2011 regular session in Louisiana, the legislature passed a bill. It's House Bill 195, passes Act 389, and what it did was make additions to the part of the law that regulates secondhand dealers. Now, what it did was expand the scope of what is considered a secondhand dealer to be Anyone other than a nonprofit entity who buys, sells, trades in, acquires, or disposes of used junk secondhand property more frequently than once per month. So if anyone does that, buys, sells, acquires, trades in secondhand property more frequently than once per month, they are considered as being engaged in the business of a secondhand dealer. Now, if one is considered being engaged in the business of a secondhand dealer, they are prohibited from offering payment in cash. That was one of the additions to the law. There are other uh, regulations that a secondhand dealer must abide by, such as gathering personal information from anyone selling uh, used items, such as their name, address, driver's license number. It even goes so far as to require that the license plate number of the vehicle in which the property was delivered uh, be obtained by the secondhand dealer and reported. This information needs to be turned over to local law enforcement. Um, and what the legislators who uh, brought this bill forward were, were discussing was that they wanted a way to be able to further uh, track criminals who were selling potentially stolen goods, fenced items. And, um, you know, they talked about restricting secondhand dealers from being able to pay in cash because that was, uh, a, you know, a disincentive for criminals trying to sell stolen items. Interesting part about this is, is that uh, throughout the whole uh, discussion and when they were bringing this bill through the committees, they amended the bill to exclude pawn shops from the cash prohibition. So where they discuss not being able to offer cash as a disincentive to criminals selling you know, stolen items, uh, at the same time they take out uh, the restriction for pawn shops. And so uh, what it makes me wonder is, is that a rational basis for restricting the payment in cash? Um, you know, the, the, the bill has some other problematic issues to it, in my opinion, such as requiring secondhand dealers to turn over what, what, I, what I would consider as being a proprietary business asset, namely the customer information, their client's information, who they do business with. Uh, most business people recognize that their customer list, their customer list, the, the information on their customers is a proprietary business asset, and it is so because it remains private. And so if a secondhand dealer is forced to turn over their customer list to law enforcement without any probable cause that the person selling any used item was selling something that's stolen, you know, something that I start to think about is, well, is that a governmental taking of private property? Well, it could be. Uh, we see often that businesses are selling their customer list. There's a value to that. And I think it's well recognized that customer information is private property. Uh, second, law enforcement has no reason to suspect that an individual selling secondhand property is selling something that's stolen. And so it's also, in my opinion, what could be considered a search of private property, personal papers and effects uh, by the government 
where there is no probable cause or reasonable, sus uh, reasonable suspicion of probable cause that the person selling the item is a criminal or that items are stolen. Uh, what I'm doing right now here in Louisiana is to try to either do one of two things. Repeal House Bill 195 Act 389 uh, or even try to see what type of support there is for a constitutional amendment to the state constitution which restricts the state or any political subdivision from banning the free use of hash. I have a lobbying group it's called the Liberty Lobbying Group here in Louisiana. I also serve as the president of the Foundation for Economic and Civil Liberty, a nonprofit organization that has taken this particular issue as one of uh, the issues that they're trying to educate the public about. And uh, through these two organizations, as well as getting out and just talking to as many business people and individuals uh, that I can, we're trying to drum up some support to oppose this legislation and look for the repeal during the next session of the Louisiana legislature. Um, as an attorney, uh, I have many small businesses that I represent that this bill directly impacts and they've asked me to look into the feasibility of you know, anything that would make sense uh, to go about correcting this issue. Uh, they feel as if they've been put at a competitive disadvantage by not being able to offer payment in cash, that they have been significantly um, restricted in transacting with their own private property. And, Restricting with the United States, restricting and being able to operate in the United States legal tender. So, you know, I, I ask anyone watching this video to do whatever they can, uh, whether they live in Louisiana or outside of the state, to speak with their local representatives, to um, talk with their neighbors, to talk to other business people about, you know, what this type of legislation can do, what type of impact it can have on business, and to make sure that if you are in Louisiana, to try to have this bill appealed, if you're outside of Louisiana, to make sure that this type of legislation does not come into your state and impact individuals and businesses wherever you may be. Yeah, thanks, thanks so much. And thanks everyone in South Carolina and around the country for watching this video. Thad is a leader in this effort, so please uh, you know, look at his website. I'll have the phone number on the screen. Uh, this is Steve. I'm, listen, listen, I've got my brother, Lee Gary, behind the camera. Mm. And we're, if you play, I want you to pan on, we're trying to support businesses in Louisiana. We've got the New Orleans Coffee and Beignet Company. And Lee, look at this look sign. And I'm telling you, folks, this is, I'm not going to eat this, but, but this is Lee's Beignet. Lee, you got this Beignet right here? This is Lee's Beignet. We have coffee that we're enjoying this. And this is the fruits of freedom. So people can go in business for themselves, enjoy what they work for, and we're trying to keep uh, Louisiana and South Carolina and the other states as free as possible. Again, thanks for joining us and signing off from Louisiana. This is Steve Austin. Thanks. Restricted in transacting with their own private property and restricting with the United States, restricting in being able to operate in the United States legal tender. So, you know, I, I ask anyone watching this video to do whatever they can, uh, whether they live in Louisiana or outside of the state, to speak with their local representatives, to um, talk with their neighbors, to talk to other business people about, you know, what this type of legislation can do, what type of impact it can have on business, and to make sure that if you are in Louisiana, to try to have this bill appealed. If you're outside of Louisiana, to make sure that this type of legislation does not come into your state and impact individuals and businesses wherever you may be. Yeah, thanks, thanks so much. And thanks everyone in South Carolina and around the country for watching this video. Thad is a leader in this effort, so please uh, you know, look at his website. I'll have the phone number on the screen. Uh, this is Steve Austin. Listen, listen, I've got my brother, Lee Gary, behind the camera. Mm. And we're, if you play, I want you to pan on, we're trying to support businesses in Louisiana. We've got the New Orleans Coffee and Beignet Company. And Lee, look at this look at the sign. And I'm telling you, folks, this is, I'm not going to eat this, but, but this is Lee's Beignet. Lee, you got this Beignet right here? This is Lee's Beignet. 
We have a policy that we're enjoying this. And this is the fruits of freedom.